started. So if anybody doesn't know me, I'm Jennifer Baby Yen. I'm the president of the Film Lab. Um, for those of you that don't know the Film Lab, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. We've been around since 1998, and we work to promote and support gender and ethnic diversity in media. Uh, we do it through three systems. We do it through education, outreach, and programming. So for example, our television series, Film Lab Presents, and our annual 72-hour film shootout competition. I think several of you here are shootout film makers, or maybe you will be, hopefully. And our shootout coordinator, Yunjun Kim, is here, and she's going to be answering a couple questions about the shootout afterwards. So we're really, really excited to have this amazing panel of television writers here. Um, thank you so much to all of you for being here. And especially Selena Cipriaso, who is actually, she is a writer herself, and she was a past 72-hour shootout judge who was on a panel for us before, and I was so impressed by her, I then became her stalker. And instead of uh, getting a restraining order, she's been extremely nice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Selena, and then she's going to introduce the panel. But Selena is written for ABC's All My Children. She's currently co-writing two screenplays with Civilian Studios, and her pilot, Evolved, was a finalist in the Creative World Awards, and her spec of The Walking Dead, Little Children, was a semi-finalist in the Creative World Awards, and also in the top 10% of the Austin Film Festival TV competition. So she's a pretty good writer. Mm -hmm. um, and she's also a playwright. Her work has been performed in New York, Chicago, San Francisco, and she's a freelance journalist, because she just writes in every medium, and apparently does it exceptionally well. She's written for CNN, The Root, Slate, Draft, Arts America, Film Bitch, or Film Buff, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the next one is Bitch. She's also written for Bitch. So. <laughs> uh, Intel and Women on Writing. So now before I embarrass myself any further, I'm going to turn it over to Selena. <laughs> our amazing panel of women, Eva Nogorski, starting over there, has written for NBC's Law and Order Special Victims Unit, Las Vegas, Deadline, and she's the author of The Down and Dirty Dish on Revenge from St. Martin's Press. She's also wrote and produced the award-winning film Solidarity, screened in festivals worldwide, including the New York Film Festival, um, New York Film Festival. Other published works include her one-act play, The Coat Rock, which was published in Polish, with the translator being playwright, Janusz Kowalski. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> She's worked for uh, advertising agencies such as Ogilvy, um, and she was the uh, screenplay competition director of the Nantucket Film Festival for over a decade. And previously in Poland, she was the co-director of the first nationwide screenplay competition, uh, Now We Scenario. Um, and next we have Olivia Briggs. Uh, most recently, Olivia Briggs has produced two of her original off-off-Broadway plays, wrote and developed a new scripted series for the Fashion One Network, and is currently working with Tokyo Pop Media on the script on the script for a new action-packed comedy feature. Awards include finalist AMC One Hour Pilot Division, Austin Folk Festival, um, Original Best Play, Fest Fest Theater Festival 2014, Jean Chambers, Best Student Play Award, uh, Best Comedy Short, Malibu Film Festival, Best Screenplay, Lit Film Festival. Uh, Simone Briggs. Uh, Simone has worked in New York for 13 years in production and on the editing staff for various uh, film and television productions, including Amy's Television, Amy's Television Networks, Comedy Central, Chappelle Show, Spike Lee's 25th Hour, VH1 Say It Out Loud, Black Film, Black Music in America, PBS Documentary, New York uh, Documentary Film, and Reading Rainbow. She currently teaches film and television uh, production, screenwriting, and cinema studies at the Cleveland Institute of Art. Uh, upcoming projects include the dynamic travel documentary series All the World Over and the exploring the cultural diversity of the African diaspora and shattering notions of race. Uh, Casey St. Ange, St. Ange. <laughs> Ange is an Emmy Award winning television writer and producer who has worked on The Late Show with David Letterman, The Rosie O'Donnell Show, Best Week Ever. She has written comedy for tons of people, but two of her favorites are Joan River and Paul F. Tompkins. Currently, she's the executive co-producer of Bravo's Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen, and in her spare time, she writes young adult novels. So we have a very wonderful and accomplished panel here. Um, so thank you guys for coming. Thank you. Um, so let's start off with, you know, the basics first. What's the first thing you've ever written? Like in life? Like in life. <laughs> I can go. Um, I my grew up my, my father was a journalist, so I grew up overseas and one of the places I lived was in the former Soviet Union. And I had this whole experience because I went to a Russian school where a girl came over to my house for a play date 
well, play date, I was a teenager, but came over <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I had to sign in and every, you know, we had to have uh, KGB um, spies essentially working for us as like a house cleaner and a driver and things like that. It was a crazy situation. Anyway, the next day she came to school and she was beaten by her father because he worked in the government and found out she came over. So I wrote a short story about this because obviously it was it's quite yeah. memorable and sad, and um, and it was published in um, my uncle's Polish newspaper. So that was the first thing I wrote. Oh, that's <laughs> pretty wow. But a extremely admiring, you know, um, <laughs> you went through but That's hugely. I like that. It's almost like a call to it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Your experience. Um, I was around the same age. I think it was somewhere second grade or I might have been first grade. Um, and I decided I wanted to write a movie. I, I don't even know that I knew where to begin or what that would mean, but I took out like the little composition notepad that you have as a kid that you're supposed to use for school and covered the entire thing in this movie that I wrote. Um, and I, I remember I spent like the entire afternoon, my brothers and sisters were like, come on and play, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm almost done, it's gonna be great, you're gonna love it. Um, I finished that night before dinner and, and told my mom, and so she was like, oh, let's take a look at it. So as she started to read it back, I, for some reason, had this mortified feeling come over me, like, this is horrible, <laughs> this is terrible, what did I do, why did I do that? <laughs> exactly, it wasn't until years later, and, and I did, I told my mom, I said, okay, I guess I won't be a writer. I, I've eliminated that as a career option. Uh, and my mom was all excited, she's like, I've got a writer on my hands, and I was like, no, no. We didn't, you just read it, didn't you listen to this thing that I did? So, yeah. <laughs> it's my first experience. I was such a little liar when I was in that writing. <laughs> <laughs> being like, yeah, my dad's rich. Um, <laughs> great uh, lie. <laughs> um, the first thing I wrote, I'm sure I wrote little stories in school, but the first thing that I remember writing is that I would love to um, write on the back of my, my worksheets in school. I would love to write jokes that I could like say on the bus, like in the back of the bus and try to impress the kids. And so I would write down these jokes. I can picture my little pencil writing. And um, one day, so I was telling, I would always tell, tell, tell jokes in the back of the bus. And one day this older girl, she was a couple years older, called my house after school. And I thought that was so weird that she was calling me. Thought she wanted to be friends. But what she wanted to tell me was, she was like, hey, they on the radio, they said that they were having a contest to tell the best joke, so I called in and I told one of the jokes that you said on the bus, and I won fifty dollars. No I'm kidding! And so my mom said I have to give you half. No. She has a great mom. Yes. <laughs> so I got twenty five dollars for like some dumb joke that I told on the bus. And that was stolen and retroactively. But yeah, that's, that's the first awesome. thing I remember writing. Yeah, they're so much cooler than mine. I think I wrote like fanfic for like a young adult novel that I love. <laughs> wow. Which, yeah. That's great. That, I mean, that's, listen, that's how Fifty Shades comes. I know. <laughs> Maybe I should go dig it out. <laughs> so, you know, um, obviously you guys work in a lot of different other media, in other mediums. Um, but what type of, like, what's your favorite type of medium? I love, I mean, I most of my career has been spent working in daily television. I love that because it's sort of just immediate. I think it's a really good training ground for other types of writing. I write, um, I've had a couple of young adult novels published and the, um, the feedback that I get is like, wow, you're fast. And I think that happens because in daily television, like it is happening. It's happening at 10 a.m. or it's happening at 11 p.m. Whenever your show is, it's happening. It's gotta be full of whatever and you just have to go and you can't really fret over it. You always hear that, um, what are the, what's that saying? Like, perfect is the enemy of done. Or what, you know, I so, yeah. So, I mean, you know, it, you can, I think you can really isolate yourself and tend to fuss over something, but when you're working in daily TV, it just it has to happen, and you have to make yourself right with it and be happy with it. So I think that you learn how to say what you want to say quickly and efficiently, and you learn how to confidently move in that direction, but also you learn how to sort of deal with it on a daily basis if it, if it isn't exactly what you want it to be. And I like the immediate feedback too. I like to know that like something that I wrote is gonna be on TV in two hours and then I'll hear in two hours and five minutes. Yeah.
what people thought of it. I mean, a lot of the writing process is the long wait. You yeah. See if right. anything happens, and it's hard when you like love a project, like you really, really love it, and you put like I work years on projects, and it's it's a long wait. So that must be really gratifying to see something come up. Yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, you know right away, like, did people laugh in the room? And that's it, you know. So, and I love writing. I write stand-up comedy for a lot of people, too, and so I love to be able to go and see um, a comic just doing your stuff, if it goes well. If it doesn't go well, I don't love it. <laughs> do you ever go up and do stand-up? Um, I went early, early in my career when I was first uh, wanting to write jokes and wanting to write comedy, um, I got that advice that, like, from... A writer that I really admired who is also a comedian like even if you don't think you want to be a comedian you should give it a try because you should know what it feels like to bomb it will really inform how you're judging what you're giving to someone else to perform um, and just it'll make you much more sympathetic writer which I think is really important because I think especially a lot of these young you know you, you hear these young guns are hired right out of college and yeah. they you know they're great and talented but there are certain things that they just don't know they've never experienced and you know you're handing something to someone who's like you know a pro but also like going out on the line to sort of like sticking their neck out they're the one that's on stage if it goes well or doesn't go well so I think it really helps so I did stand up I made myself do it for one year and um, yeah and it was I hated it every <laughs> second I hated I mean I liked I loved the friendships and things that I made and that was great but the actual performing was definitely not for me mm -hmm. yeah I find one of the scariest things is to watch your work, whether it's on TV or in a theater. Um, I just can't do it. Like literally one of my first 10 minute plays, I went to the back of the room <laughs> and my husband and all my friends were like, where's the way to go? <laughs> went outside and I kept my ear to the door because I was like, no, I don't want to hear the, what the audience is saying. I, just, I literally waited 10 minutes. I was like, it must be done now. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely makes time slow down. Yeah. Like, what about you guys? What is it like for you to see your work? Um, well, like the TV stuff I've written so much gets changed. So that, I don't know what's harder is actually to see your work that is up there and you can say at least I wrote all of that or yeah. to see like half of it and then storyline B is completely different and something you would never write and yet it somehow fits in the show and that's sort of terrifying too, especially if you don't particularly like, like it. it. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's... Um, I think it goes both ways. So you just have to accept what it is. I mean, there's so many hands in TV that it's get involved, so many producers. And, yeah. Well, it's collaborative and yet not collaborative, you know? So it depends on your situation. So I was a staff writer, but I was also a freelance writer. So when I was a freelance writer, I'd hand off the script and that was it. And then what appeared on screen was something that's very different from what my last draft was. So. Yeah, sure. um, but you know, you take the money and run, take the mm -hmm. credit and run, and <laughs> you uh, move. For, you know, use it to your advantage. So. What about you guys, Simone, Olivia? What is it like for you to see your work? Yeah, you definitely get that feeling in the bottom of your stomach and you feel your heart like jump up into your throat and your knees get weak and your palms are sweaty and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> that, that's just, you know... Great job. What, <laughs> what it is going... What it, what it feels like. <laughs> right, exactly. And just dissolve into a puddle of water and slink away. Um, but yeah, it is, it's, it's hugely anxiety you know, driving when you when you listen to your work um, performed, and and definitely even if you've in, in theater, sometimes you're much more involved in the rehearsal. You're, you're there, yeah. you're kind of participating a little bit more. Um, but even still, there's going to be changes. Yeah. So um, so that's something that is just to understand or know that when it comes to I think dramatic writing, it's going to change once the actors get it, even work with it, and that sort of thing. Um, it's going to change. So being able to accept those changes when you when you hear them. Um, but also some, you know, the, this, after that initial anxiety passes for me, um, I find myself listening to the audience more than to what I did. I really find myself listening to, you know, are they laughing when I, when I expected them to laugh? Do, do I have that kind of pause? Are they holding their breath when I kind of want that sentimental moment? Is there anyone that sniffled a little? Do I hear it? Do I hear a little bit of someone going, you know, like, I, you know, I'm really listening. And, and it, what it makes me realize is that um, when, I'm, when I'm, my work is happening, as much as I want to leave that room, 
and not be there, I, I have to pin my feet because there's this relationship that I'm entering into yeah. with the audience, and I, that's really important for me. Um, what I liked uh, in television that I got to see was a lot of times that relationship would just be with the actors coming back from shooting because we're already writing the next week, you know, in, in, when you're staffed. You're already writing the next week. And yeah. so watching them in the feed on the monitor and seeing what they're doing or how they're performing, they end up becoming kind of my audience. Um, because Nielsen, we look at those ratings and they're up, they're down, they're here, they're there, the share of this and blah, blah, blah. But really seeing how my actors kind of like something or gravitate toward it. Um, and, and what I love about television is what I don't, when I, when I see an episode they're, they're shooting um, and I don't like it, I'm really mad at myself because I, cause I knew that line could have been stronger, but I needed to get done and get right. a script in. Yeah. Um, I get another chance next week, you know, like if yeah, the, yeah. the little time that I was staff, I, you know, I got a chance next week. So whatever I didn't like in that script, you know, or maybe not the very next week, but the next time I got a sign, I would be able to kind of tweak that or fix it or, or, you know, kind of collect different things I didn't like in my own writing and kind of make it better. So for me, writing, you know, for television honed the craft so much for the very things that you, you know, talked about, Casey. Yeah. Sure. yeah. I definitely think that as well. I mean, like, when I was working on All My Children, it's right. all, well, you also worked in soaps. And yes. It's like, all collaborative. Um, it's so many different levels, and also, it's it's a crazy schedule. It's one of the craziest schedules in television. There's no off-season. There's no off-season. Right. There's, like, almost 252 There's, episodes a year or something. Right. So almost almost the same you amount of days in a year. You get a lot year. of holidays. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, people are calling you all the time yes and it's it's totally stressful but at the same time it's kind of it's gratifying i mean i grew up watching all my children um like that's actually why i'm writing tv is because like i saw erica kane and i was like this awesome is kind, of, this is kind of cool you know she was kind of in the canadian wilderness i don't know what she was doing. <laughs> and like fighting a bear <laughs> and i was like this is amazing <laughs> And so years later, I got to write a scene where, well, she was, I think she was, uh, she kidnapped a guy. And it was kind of exciting to, yes. you know, have her. So, right. You know, the character who occupied occupied your fantasies, you're now it, providing story yeah. for, and she's getting lines. to be badass again. Yeah. Not, I, I wanted. I wish I could write the bear scene. Right. Uh, who right. would want, want to write the bear scene? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of the things that um, this panel is also about is like oh, there's a lot of like first time writers here, and you know the writing process. So what's it like for you guys when you have an idea? Like, what do you start doing? Do you start brainstorming? Do you script write your way? What's the process for you? When's the last time I had an idea? That's <laughs> <laughs> what I'm usually asking myself. Um, I really am like very old school analog. Like, when I have an idea, I really write it down because that is very valuable to me. <laughs> like, I think I'm sure everybody probably feels like every time you write something, you're like, well, if that's it, that'll be the last time I ever do that. That'll be the last idea I ever have. And I think anyone creative <laughs> feels like that. Like, this is it. That's never happening again <laughs> so I like to write everything down and just sort of like let it marinate and like if you have enough time and you can just keep calm about it and sort of like add to it make some notes and uh, meditate on it I'm a huge believer in meditation like sort of unlocking little cylinders inside you uh, just and you know whether it's formal meditation or just sort of like taking a shower and zoning out and and uh, thinking about it that way, but yeah, I just like letting the idea grow. Yeah, just letting letting the idea grow if you have time um, and giving yourself time and being like calm about it and being confident that it'll come to you, like that you you got this. That's like my process. And giving time, like when you're so in it and you're writing and thinking this is the most genius thing I've ever <laughs> written, this is going to, you know, Academy Awards, everything like that. <laughs> Put it away for two days and then read it again and then you'll be horrified at how bad it is and how it needs to be rewritten. I mean, that's at least every time with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I do it again and again and again. But yeah, I mean, it's just giving that time, giving that breath, like after you've written it. I mean, I have to write down every idea because I'll yeah. forget them yeah, in two seconds. Are. 
and then um, do you handwrite it or do you kind of uh, well now on the computer yeah. I mean I, yeah I have books Notes. somewhere piled away in storage with all these you know amazing ideas that clearly need to be come to life at some point <laughs> um, but um, but I just remember so many times writing something or just even a few pages and then go, when you go back to it and just give it you know a day or two it's just it's when you have a little bit of perspective it just you know, always allow yourself for that. But don't just rush and hand it to someone to read. Yeah, I mean, I firmly, really firmly, firmly believe in readers and getting yes. other opinions, Absolutely. although you have to be careful with that as well. But yeah. um, for sure, always get an objective opinion, but give yourself that, that first opinion. And not your opinion. mother, necessarily, not no. your mother. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> or your best not, yeah, definitely not. not or your any. stalker. <laughs> yeah. yeah, try to give it to someone objective. And right. uh, I mean, the best thing is to hire a reader, although everyone is subjective, and yeah. if they don't like horror movies, they're not going to like your horror script, no matter, you know, how, so, it, so it's a tricky situation. I mean, just even working with the screenplay competition in Nantucket, and the process we went through in selecting scripts, even though it was all numerically based, and we try to make it as objective as possible, there was, there was subjectivity it's all the time, because there are readers... Yeah. One reader would love a script and the other one would give it a zero. And I'm like, I, yeah, so oh, I would no. just, you know, then we'd have to yeah. do this. And it wasn't fair, but there was, how else do you, it's like going to the movies. Not everyone's yeah. going to like every movie that's out I mean, there. I mean, I was a reader for some yeah. for a competition. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, that taught me a lot yeah. about what to do, what not to do. But I, I, you know, I actually think I was one of the more positive readers, which is like a good or bad thing, I don't know. But I always like saw potential. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I always think there are more good ideas than not. But know? it's the execution. It's too. always the execution. So it's not just. The I idea. always found that like act ones were really good, but yeah. then like by act two to like three, mm -hmm. it was kind of like I almost feel like there are a lot of writers that like rewrite that act one a lot, mm -hmm. and then like. Well, it's the hook. It's yeah. the hook. Yeah. You know, it's what hooked them in. Yeah. You know? But then it's kind of like the rest of the movie. Yeah. It's hard to follow through, which is important in the writing. Process. And I think what you said is like a really excellent point. Like, um, as you start to work as a writer, and I'm sure you guys probably get this all the time, but people always come to you, I have an idea for this thing. Like, people. I love when people are like, I'll give you this idea. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And write it for free. Yeah, exactly. Like, we'll go in on it half and half. You write it. Here's my idea. And so, like, ideas are they're wonderful they're you obviously need them you can't go forward without an idea but everybody has ideas and it really is in the execution and you know and what i think a lot of people ignore about the execution is like figuring out what the hell you're doing like so many people just you know launch headlong and it reminds me a lot of how now that i have i have teenage sons and it reminds me a lot of how they are about things like they just Kind of think they know how to do something like they like I kind of know how to drive like I've been seen, I've seen you drive <laughs> so you know it's kind of like that thing like you know yeah I've seen movies I could write a movie and it's like well actually there's like a specific way to go about it and there's a goal and you know obviously all these rules are made to be broken and you know but so many people like think that they're really really creating art and it's that's a hard that's a hard thing to sort of be like well. You know, there's a way to do this, and there's a way to write a television episode, a way to write a movie, a way to write a blog post, a way to write a novel, and, you know, obviously, like, everyone's mileage may vary, but there's, you know, ideas are great, but it's really just, like, the very... It's the well, even, even with TV, I mean, if you have a, an idea for a TV show, you have to write the pilot, but it's not just the pilot, you have to write the whole Bible, yeah. which tells you what's going to happen that entire season, what's yeah. going to happen with all the characters, and then the Bible for the next season. It's so much work before you can even get in the door to see if somebody's going yeah. to be interested in it, right. because just one episode alone, I mean, I have so many of those episodes yeah. <laughs> ready to go, and then I have yeah. no idea where they go further, and yeah. it's, it's a lot of work. I mean, it's, it's really... Work. I, mean, I, think, I think anything that you're writing, from like the, just the smallest joke on, you know, a late night television show, to like, you know, a larger, you know, up to full movies or whatever, is um, really like just going and saying like, what am I trying to say? Yeah. And if you're not... If you look at something, like even if it's kind of funny or kind of whatever, if you kind of like it, like if it's not saying anything, then 
Right, if it doesn't mean something to you first, it won't mean anything to yeah. anybody I mean, else. Yeah, it's just a cool idea. It really, yeah. yeah. It yeah. really, and, and sometimes it's hard because you do start off with a really cool idea. You love the idea, it's funny, it makes you laugh, or, or, or it gives you this sort of like chill up your spine. You know, you fall in love with this idea, but really do beg yourself the question of, why is this so interesting to me? Why really is it? I think earlier on in your writing process is stronger because your subconscious will start to, or unconscious will just start to feed it a little more in what you're writing. But definitely ask yourself, to me, not yet to my audience, not yet, this is for 18, you met 1834, not yet any of that. Just first, why is this story so interesting to me as the writer? Why am I about to spend hours with these characters and hours with the story and writing this day and night Days for weeks? Why am I about to spend that much time? Answer that for yourself. Mm -hmm. You can find it is write a character bio. Write what you're, what you're, something yeah. that happened to your character when she was 12. Right? You know, one of those old dramatic writing exercises, what's in your character's purse, you know, a briefcase or something like that. Like, bring, let yourself write. Great, yeah, yeah, I still do a lot of exercises from dramatic writing that I had when I was, when I was in school. No. But write to find it, you know. Let yourself write. Let a lot of that free writing um, happen because that's how your your imagination starts to inform you about what that meaning is. Um, I think this is really important because, and I think if you don't know, you search for it. Because mm -hmm. last year when I was taking meetings in Los Angeles, a lot of people, I had two pilots. And I had... Um, and my, the, the first one I knew I loved, but I questioned why I loved it. It was a teen apocalyptic drama. It's CW, it's sci-fi, it's ABC film. I knew exactly what it was. And I knew why I wrote it, because I love Buffy. Those are like, <laughs> I love Joss Whedon. And I was shy about saying to people, you know, because I watch everything. I watch like 14 to 20 shows. I was shy of saying to people, uh, it's not Mad Men. You know, it's not Orange is the New Black. So I felt like, oh, I should, I wrote a black comedy pilot, which was okay, you know? But I was like, you know, when people were like, which one is you? And both can be you. It's just, you know, sometimes it helps to just move in one direction when you're first starting out. And so I didn't know. So I was like, well, let me just try to figure it out. So I proceeded to write a girls, which was like the most miserable month of my life mm -hmm. because I don't know how you could do it because I, every night I was up till 2 a.m. being like, I am not funny. <laughs> then I wrote an arrow and then I was like I actually think the girls might be better than the arrow but I had so much more fun on arrow because you know on uh, girls was so much like why is she doing this like emotionally on arrow I was just like I could just make this, this up he's invisible <laughs> think of a problem like a way out of it and then once I searched for that I just found that, that was my niche that and I found that the next three or four ideas were all in that vein. That that's what I loved writing. That's what I loved exploring. And it was, and it was just absolutely accepting that it's okay to say that you're the CW. And well, you and, and Selena, did you uh, did you ever come up with the the apocalyptic girl? Like, what do you think was calling you to write that yeah, one? It's actually, um, well, it's a lot of personal stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but it's yeah. actually like I'm like. I was out in apocalyptic shows, Walking Dead does this, and I think CW's The 100 does this wonderfully, is like PTSD, yeah. like, what, yes. like what choices you have to make, what the apocalypse forces you to do, and one of the things I really wanted to examine was memory, mm -hmm. you know, how that affects your memory, how, you know, it kind of, um, my show like kind of deals with suicide, mm -hmm. and how living through apocalypse you might not want to live. Right. You know, so I've always just been fascinated by that. And, um, you know, because, you know, I come from like a very emotional family, so I think that's just what was driving right. me. And you had a female as your protagonist? Yeah. I always yeah, had yeah. Always had See, I, even, even in just knowing you, like, Erica Kane and the Bear, you know, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the apocalyptic, you know, sometimes you can sit back and, and that's what I mean by like, writing, writing, writing. Um, Selena, you know, there is a girl faces huge obstacle, you know, that, that she should not be able to face. You know, that might be something that's in calling in you, that's, you know, in yeah. watching that girl, that woman, 
rise to this occasion, you know? So sometimes it's, like, I want to say it is absolutely okay to go, I love soap operas, or I love vampire yes. stuff, or I love, you know, this or that and that sort of thing. I, I do the same thing. I, there was a show on, I think it was CW, The Craft, which I loved. I'm like this, you know. The, cir the yeah. Secret Circle. The Secret Circle, yes, yes, loved it. Loved that show. Like, think it's amazing, you know? And, and, and it, doesn't, it, doesn't bother, it doesn't bother me that I'm like late 30s and I'm, and I'm really entrenched in this, you know? Because yeah. there's, there, there's those things. Um, sure. It informs me. You know what? Actually, one of the, I was writing things that I didn't like, you know? Um, and I couldn't figure out why is my career taking off? Why, why am I not doing better? You know, and my fiance now, you know, now husband said, you don't write what you read. You, you're not writing for you. You're not writing, you're, you're writing for what you think is hot right now. You're writing for what you think they want to see in television right now. You're writing for the number one demographic right now. You're writing for all this other stuff. You just need to write what you want to read. I mean, Toni Morrison said it already. You know, write the novels you want to read. Write the screenplays. Write the television shows. Write the web series. Write the jokes. Write the things that you want to hear, that you want to say, that you want to see. Um, and then that's what starts to dig down into why is this important to me? Why is this meaningful to me? You know, could it be because I'm a girl that feels like I have to face giant bears all the time? You know, whatever is in my life is a giant bear. You know, so there's something to that, I think. But, but I think what's consistent about it or what is the, the takeaway is when you're in that searching mode, be writing, be putting word to paper, you know, because that's the craft we're in. I tend to daydream a lot. I will daydream forever on my ideas. And it's, it's, it's just me, you know, it's beautiful then. It's, it's nice then. And when I start to write is when it gets difficult. So, can, you know, make sure that throughout that process that. that you're, yeah, that, yeah. You write, that you're typing, your hands are on the keyboard, you know. But going More back pencil. to what you were talking about, um, what you like which is you in terms of script and just in a more practical sense because everybody wants to make money <laughs> while writing um in la at least what i experienced they want to know are you a drama writer are you a comedy yes. writer i'm Absolutely. sure you went through that you know i mean just i i decided i was a drama writer also and i decided to write like a funny uh <coughs> sitcom spec script and immediately people are like, why are you doing this? Yeah. Why, you know, yeah. why are you even, they're not gonna, they're not gonna even look at it. Right. Even though I had already a track record, things were going on, it wasn't gonna happen because then it's just too much for them to deal with that, wait a second, she could do both, you know, and yeah. not that I could do both, I'm not saying I could, but um, it's, it, it, it's, it's like, it's very tough. I mean, it's like a job, you know, when you, when you have a resume, people want to see what you've done before and can you do the job and they're looking to fill it in for you now, so. It's, it's good to figure out what that is on your own and not write a whole bunch of different things in all these different genres and then expect like everyone to read it like seriously. That, that they need to have a wide portfolio rather than a specific portfolio. That what? I think that a lot of people feel like that when they're starting out, they need to have a wide portfolio. Right, which is rather, wrong. And I yeah. think specific is yeah. way better. Yeah. Like there's nothing no, wrong with exploring a little bit to find out what's exactly. right for yeah. you. But in, Try it out, but yeah. then find what yeah. you have yeah. fun with because Writing is not fun. Yes. <laughs> you're not getting paid for it. Go have fun. You like spend writing. a lot of time. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and it's it's interesting too because we're we've been talking about finding your voice and saying what something you know what am I trying to say with something when you're writing for like a well-established show your voice needs to be the voice of that show mm -hmm. so it doesn't really matter what your personal voice yeah. is as yeah. a writer like you get like yes. you get your jollies on little victories like I really got this thing in that was very me you know and I've had that experience where people have have contacted me after a show that I've written on and said like I bet this was you was it in fact a thing that you wrote it it felt it seemed like something but you I love said. you saying that Casey because Cass, because what we have is we do have a situation where you're going into a writing staff you're going into a television show where that voice is there and that's predominant but still looking at those what you tiny victories yeah those like little tiny things that that still will kind of mean something to you even if no one else gets it over time people will go wait did you write that one I yeah. thought I saw your fingerprints in it yeah. so I think I think that's, that's important. Um, when I was a writer's assistant, I saw a lot of that. I saw the writers who didn't do that. Yeah. Who were just like, nope, I'm just here to write whatever they want. So that's what I'm spitting out, you know. And then I saw the writers, and it does take a little bit extra. It takes a little bit yeah. of extra time to sit and find. It may be just that line, or maybe just how you set up that scenario, mm -hmm. or it may just be, you know, the, the sense of humor that you do bring in um, to a drama, the way people speak to each other, that is still consistent with the overall show, but still has a little bit of you in it. And I think that's strong. It's definitely harder. 
I think you're pinpointing one of the most interesting uh, trends that's going on because specs, specs of existing scripts, used to be the big thing. And now it's of more existing ships. Of existing oh, yeah. ships. It used to be a big thing. And now it's pilots. Yeah. Like original well, that keeps pilots. changing. They keeps changing. They've been there for two yeah. years. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, and uh, the recommendation I've heard lately is to have both. Like, I mean, right. Right. You get you're ready with fellowships. Oh, the fellowships, are just, they still yeah. want to spec right. existing shows. So. Yeah. And it depends on it's who, a you're, who you're trying to work with, you know? Because the preferences vary from show to show. So I mean, some, I mean, I know some showrunners that just want pilots, but I also know showrunners that are like, I want one of each. Yeah. I want to know that you can write for an existing show that's like my show, and I want to know that you have your own voice. So honestly, I kind of try to do both a year, like one a piece a year. If you not, do? You do that every year? I think yeah, I try. I'm trying to convince myself to do a person of interest this year, and I'm just so worn out. I'm like having rewrite you guys ever have that? <laughs> Where you just can't stop. Like, when you guys were talking about like needing to give your ideas space, I don't know how to do that, and I think I'm actually like suffocating my character. <laughs> and I don't know how to stop. It's really strange. I'm like so addicted to the thing, but I'm like, you have to ask yourself why you're doing that. And if I were to play armchair psychologist, <laughs> I would say it's probably because you're anxious about yeah, what you anxious. what you've written. Yeah. So you know, it's I'm very OCD about it. Right yeah, now. yeah. So that's like. I don't know. Maybe there's medicine you can get. That's what I. That's usually when I give it to a, a writer that a friend that I respect a lot, I, and that I know is gonna be honest with me. That's when I give it. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah. but sometimes and then they I mean, narrow my focus. This, yeah. this this needs work. Yeah. Or sometimes it can make it, make it worse. Right. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. you know, it's the balance. I mean, so let's segue into that. What is it like to? When you have your idea, who do you reach out to for notes? Like, who do you trust? How have you found your readers? Uh, I, I have a very close friend in LA who's a writer, and I trust her. She's a very good writer, much, much better than I am, and um, I send her everything. So she's always my first read. To like and the she's stuff brutal. Yeah. yeah, she'll be brutal, but in a nice way. But brutal, <laughs> and uh, she's Polish like me. So, uh, and then I have I have a few other friends who 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 read my stuff. Um, so, and you know I, I try to take I try to re remain confident when you get rid of the part. You have to still try to figure out. Okay, no, actually I I do think that's you know the way it should be. It's hard when people are like, no, that doesn't work. Right. And you're thinking it does, so it's fun. It's hard to find that balance. You just have to find it in yourself. When to stand up for an idea, but also when to yeah, when to extend the note. Yeah, right. Um, but I, I mean, I, I fully encourage. I mean, I, I think everybody should get second. I, I meet people who yeah. don't do that, who write and are just like, this is great, and I'm studying to producers. I'm like, you're crazy. You are absolutely crazy. You have one shot. That's one read. Other. You've got one read, and that person's and gonna read one that you're not gonna read. Yeah, oh read. Like, don't even hire somebody. Just yeah, do it. yeah, because it's amazing the stuff you'll find on the first page. Like, I didn't, title this I didn't even stuff. understand when people would spend like sixty bucks to yeah. enter the competition that I read for 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 um for you. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay, and the, like the first sentence was like a typo. I was like, didn't you even look at your first yeah. page? Yeah, you know. Yeah, your brain keeps auto correcting it. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times, like you either set it, you set it down, walk away from back, or you have someone else read it because your brain will keep correcting it for you. Because even if it's really like, even if it's great, even if you're a great writer, that kind of thing just like it counts against you. Yeah, don't I mean, give it them just a reason does. to say no. Yeah, just, yeah. I mean, don't give them a reason to say no, and that's an easy reason. Well, yeah. I, I, I'm sure, you, you know, when we when I read something, I start like a running tally, like, oh, that's the third thing, that's the fifth thing. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to be like that, but also, like, it's like, it's kind of like the thing that you do, you know what I mean? Like, it, like if you're saying you want to be a writer, then that, that's a part of it, writing well and taking care of, you know? Actually, one of the readers, Danny, um, that we mutually know, he had said to me, wow, and these notes, and I know I need to work on my proofreading, that's actually something I'm continually working on. I'm like now proofreading things before I can give it to friends mm -hmm. to make sure I catch it. Um, a reader said to me, uh, you know, this is just too many typos by page three, and he was like, you're lucky I just forced myself through it because your script deserves better than that, you know? Mm -hmm. Is that you have to respect your work enough to do the small things to get people to read it. Right. It's really important. Yeah. 
And a lot of times, even in feature films where you're pitching, and sometimes they're throwing out crazy ideas to you, sometimes they're just, they're just playing. I mean, they're just having fun. I don't want to say they're just playing, but they've seen so many writers come in and out. When I worked at New Line Cinema, sometimes they would just say the craziest thing about a screenplay that I know good and well that development person did not really want to do with that screenplay. But what they're also, what they're trying to do, do the writers that I saw being more successful with it were the ones who would try to creatively answer back, who would try to find a creative solution mm -hmm. or try to know, well, what, oh, so, it's, so what is it that you don't like about it? You don't like, oh, I can see, you think the character's too harsh at that moment? Oh, okay, I think I get what you're saying. What about this? What about that? The moment you're entering into a collaborative relationship with them and saying, I'm, I still want to be the guy, the gal you call to work on this. And that one writer that I saw do that in development at New, at New Line Cinema, he ended up being a script doctor. So they didn't do his script at that moment in time, but he then was hired to work with a lot of their scripts. So that he was, and it was a nice way to make money while he waited for his, um, for you know, his break to be able to, you know, have his films produced. So you, that's one thing that I just, you know, if you can think of it as not being defensive, but being more as like.